going to call to order at 532. Uh, first order of business, yep, because we've got Ellen and Wendy both, is to approve the attached minutes from the March 24th, 2021 meeting. If I could get a motion. Ellen, motion. Ms. Wendy, he'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, unanimously approved. All right, and then we'll go right into subcommittee updates. Uh, first item up is website updates. Uh, so I don't know, Devin, if you want to start, Ira, I think maybe you might have some information around this too. Sure. sure. Go ahead, Devin. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, and I can, can everyone see this okay? Yes. Okay. Um, we did update the project status. Ira sent me some new language here. So we'll be updating this um, about once every week or so. And um, down here, we did include the side-by-side -side photo. So it is on the homepage now. Um, otherwise, we did um, make the side-by-side -side page live under this schematic design navigation bar here. Um, so here everyone can click into a specific area to read a little bit about the current condition and the, uh, and to look at a new facility example. Um, and a lot of this is the same uh, language from the side-by-side -side video. And just underneath these areas here is also the, the video once more. And uh, the only other uh, major thing that we did change, we added this community outreach page. Um, and this just has uh, a list of all the community outreach events that we've been doing these past couple of weeks. Um, so you can click, it's got the, the meeting video and the presentation deck for each of those meetings. Devin, can you switch over? I'm gonna give you a highlight of the, the action on the website. Uh, Devin and I were this morning going through the analytics. So I'll just give a quick overview. Uh, actually starting from January 22nd, when the newsletter hit the homes, because we're using it as an indicator when the public. So Devin, I just want to do this quickly, if you don't mind, sure. pass it over to me. Yep, you should be able to. Okay. And I'll pass it back to you. All right, so here's from January 22nd until today. So it's showing uh, peaks over here. So we had four, four, over 4,000 uh, visits and 3,100 unique visitors. Um, and it was around 12K in terms of page views. Um, and what I'm gonna do show you right now, so you get the idea of the geography here. I don't have to go through, we'll go through this like here. So Farmington had the most, so we had 3,900 and we had actually a third. And you're seeing some of these other communities. My sense is you have people working in these communities who wanna to go to the site or you know, they're family sharing over here. So I just wanna show you that there's people coming from all over looking at the site uh, coming. Some of this because we don't have actually an, um, an SEO campaign or anything, uh, but it, I just want to show you how this is, you know, how this kind of plays out a little here. And so a good portion of the state, believe it or not, is, is going to the site. For, in other words, they're doing searches and Farmington would show up, uh, which is a friend you've done any analytics on websites before. It's pretty typical. So you, we have around, uh, you know, a little, little less than a third actually, you know, who came to the site. Um, and as you can see here, this is, uh, when you go through it here, these are direct. And so these have been driven when people get the newsletter. And so they're actually seeing our referral, and which is what we want. And here, here we got social on here. So the most activity is what we want, but there's been also a big uptick. We got social and search. So direct, that means they're clicking directly from, you know, uh, 
from the newsletter or finding what it is. It's just an actual direct click from, it could be from the town side of, of it, whatever. We haven't done as deep a dive into this. I'm sorry, we can't do, we can't go through Google here. I'm just gonna show you right here. Um, traffic sources, keywords, I'm gonna go back here. To, Uh, one second here. Traffic sources. I want to be able to go down here a little bit more. Keywords. Traffic. Okay, so here we got my visits. Uh, here, and it's coming a lot from Chrome and mobile. What's interesting here, when you see a high level here of, of coming through mobile devices. That's how critical is so that we're finding a big increase. People are just using their iPhones or whatever device it is to look at it, which limits a lot of the visual activity. Um, and so this is pretty equal. And if you broke down the age and demographics, this would be the younger people, probably under 40. And this would be a, more the older audience here. And, iOS operates so that means it's mostly Macs coming in like this. So I just want to give you kind of a highlight here. Um, let me see the activity log one minute. Uh, popular content. All right. So here's I, just one more slide here. The homepage is the first one. They're looking at the calendar. And we've been driving to schematic, which is, so this popped up because it's brand new. So we've been trying to drive people to this. That means they're going and looking at the schematic designs coming in here. FAQ, building layout, building design, site plan. So a lot of the activity is looking at what's going on in the calendar, which we've been posting so they know where to go like this. And obviously at homepage always gets the most hits around 4K. So that's as much as I think I wanna show you here. Um, the calendar, schematic, asking questions. So these are the page views. Page views are always higher than people coming to the site. And so it's not bad. You know, keep in mind, this is only from January 22nd. So this is uh, not bad for a couple, of, not even a couple of months of, uh, you know, people coming and looking at it. So right now, what we want to do is just bump up some of these other ones here. Uh, and so the schematic and the video, because the video just got posted. So we're going to see how many people are looking at that, because that's where they're going to get to see the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, weekly events we're doing. All right, so I'll pass it back unless you have a question or two. Other than goes, how come <laughs> so many people outside of farm are looking at it? This is very typical. That's because of searching. But what was good to see on the chart is that direct people are finding it directly going there without, because you're not investing any ads or Facebook ads or SEO or Google search. So the organic way of searching is working fine here. Just want to give you that highlight. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing this here and kick it back to you, Devin. Thank you. And that's all I had. Thanks, Anna. Anybody else have any questions or thoughts? Website, website updates, anything they've heard, comments, feedback? <clears throat> I think, uh, Meg, one thing I know Beth mentioned to me um, is making a more visible um, link on the town website to help drive traffic there. We do have a link um, on a, a sidebar, but I think if we make something more prominent, it will help drive traffic as well. So that is in the works. And it also should be on the, on the school site, the Board of Ed site, making sure it's up there because what we have up now is pretty much it. Mm -hmm. You know, we got around four weeks left until the quiet period. So the site, you know, is action packed right now. It has video introductions, anything you want to know about what's what's going on. So there's not much more going to be added to other than calendar dates, updates. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Scott, you would probably know better than me, but the school website, I know the high school one has the, that's like the first thing you see, I think, is the new building um, rendering and a link out to the building website, I think, right? <clears throat> yeah, you're right, Meg. 
don't know if that's still with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. I really like that page you guys added with all the um, meeting content. Um, so I think that's something we can start promoting, even getting at something out maybe via social media. Here's a, here's a location for you guys to go to if you want to look at, you know, watch another meeting or, you know, something you might have missed. Um, just to have all those resources in one spot might be really beneficial for people, I think. And I think we keep going this way. My estimation, mm -hmm. by the time we have to shut down or at least minimize this here, we'll have 3,500 unique views from Farmington residents, which is pretty good. You know, when I've done these campaigns, if you don't, we've been pushing it, newsletter has been helping out and so forth. And once we get more people to look at the electronic newsletter, we're going to push that out on the website more and more. Okay. All right, great. Um, thank you, guys. It's, that's great work. Looks really nice. Um, I, we kind of have a standing agenda item on there for you, Tall Timbers Marketing. I don't know if there's anything other than what we've got here on the agenda that you need to update us on. Um, no, other than we're working on the final newsletter poster. And I think I explained that last time. It's going to kind of like follow the old brick road. It's kind of featuring what, you know, what's going to be going on in the new building. Uh, the side by side we've covered. So this is completely about the future. Here's, you know, what the uh, community members, what they're going to be voting on, residents. And so that's what we're working on right now. Um, I think, you know, the, obviously the video uh, Meg did was fine, you know, to do it. The other thing is, again, focusing on uh, reaching as much as possible through the PTOs, uh, more the elementary parents. So that's what we're focusing on uh, right now. It's a final push is only under four weeks right now in which we can reach these target audiences. Yeah, I think we can talk about that under five a little bit, like, you know, additional things we need to talk about, next steps, anything, any kind of gaps we need to fill. Um, or feedback as well on, on what the community outreach has looked like to date and, uh, you know, kind of feedback on that, <clears throat> I think is, is, we can kind of talk about that a little bit further. Yeah. Um, side by side panels, I think we're good there, right? That one, I, I think we finally said we can, this one can finally come off the agenda after many, many, <laughs> it, might even, it might even be years that I can say, right? I think it might even be years that we've, we, we knew we, the importance and we knew it. So I think, uh, you know, that, that's great. I think it's nice to have that accomplishment and that tool for us to use moving forward. Um, all right, social media updates. So um, I don't know, Kat, if you want to just kind of give us a quick overview on plans, what's, what's up ahead and any thoughts around that? I think um, the biggest thing that we are pushing on social media is to our meetings. Um, as you can probably see on the Facebook page, we also are uh, streaming them on Facebook Live. So not only if people, you know, can't access a Zoom meeting and they're, they follow us on Facebook or want to find us on Facebook, they can follow along all of the meetings there. Um, so that's been our focus to try to make sure that we are directing people to when the next meetings are. There's been separate events for all of those set up. Um, and then I think, Meg, what you just suggested, you know, pushing content to individual pages. Like, did you miss a recording? Go here. And, and I think we'll fill in the gaps with that. So as I mentioned that the last time we are using Hootsuite, which in one click will post on multiple platforms, which just makes it easier and takes a little bit of the manual work away from us having to post on three different platforms. So um, that has really helped simplify and make sure that we're consistently posting. If you have any questions, just thoughts around social media approach. Meg, my only thing was just to um, make sure that in the next newsletter that our social media platforms are included somewhere. Okay. Um, I don't think we had that in the last newsletter. So I was just hoping to get that included in the next one. And Kat, I don't know if you said it, but um, we have, I mean, people are attending the weekly, um, right? You've got some good traffic of people attending on social media as opposed to actually logging into the, to the meeting. Yeah, absolutely. We are seeing um, some comments come in through the social media. So people are attending it that way. 
Um, we need to, uh, in terms of like Devin and I logistically figure out how to manage that because we want to make sure we're answering questions. And, you know, with the Q&A feature, it is difficult to <laughs> uh, make sure you're hitting all of them. So we just need to make a conscious effort to make sure we're, we're taking a look at, at Facebook as well. And um, I know Scott and, and Kat uh, is getting out that schedule to all the other Facebook accounts and groups in town. We've talked about that. Distributing it so they have access minimally to the e-newsletter from the last one, which lists all the links for that, so I know we're working on that also. Um, and whatever that list is, sending this uh, electronic, you know, send that, if not the back page, the whole document. And so we can get to see people out there, at least getting that information again. It uh, never hurts for them to see the newsletter and electronic version, and also see the meetings they can attend. Yep, uh, thank you, Ira. We, we talked about that today earlier, yeah. that um, we're gonna utilize our MailChimp platform a little bit more to make sure we have a large distribution list of hundreds of people so we can push out, you know, news links to the newsletter, links to upcoming meetings, just making sure we're driving people to, to access that information and, and back to our website. Yeah, whatever, you know, have on emails, tour people, give email addresses, just use that, that's all. And I did notice, Kat, you're pushing out on um, the town, um, I can't think of the name of the, tool that you send out the messages. Oh, on Everbridge? Is Everbridge, that what that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. So we have Yeah, that. we also have, um, the town has Explore Farmington, which sends out weekly emails of events going on. So they are highlighting um, a lot of our meetings as well and, and making sure people stay informed through that avenue. Um, our economic development director sends a quarterly business newsletter as well. So we had a um, an article in there, again, just driving traffic back and it, it replicated um, the information that was in the newsletter we recently sent out. So just trying to get the same message across, you know, as, as many places as possible. Anybody else have any thoughts or anything else or any ideas that kind of struck you for consideration? Uh, why don't we go into community outreach updates? Um, I just wanted to give a quick update and uh, a thank you uh, to everybody. To date, everything has been going really, really well. Um, I've got some great feedback from people on the meetings that we have conducted. Um, we've tried a couple different formats of things with the introduction of the side-by-side -side video and incorporating that into the presentations, really understanding what the topic meetings will look like. Uh, and really thinking about the questions that we've received uh, during these presentations. So um, they've been unique, uh, meaning per meeting, we've seen different questions um, based on our audience, which I think is great. Um, and we're, I think the, the most effective thing we can do is adjust um, as we hear repeat questions and things of concern or points that maybe that we aren't um, addressing uh, appropriately in the presentation. So again, learning for us, I think is the best way to look at that um, every meeting. But so far, I, you know, I can't thank everybody enough for their participation, uh, for the effort and uh, just being able to be there and answer questions and, and really, you know, show everybody the, the excitement around the project that we're looking for. So, um, you know, I think overall, Kat, I don't know if you wanted to give kind of an overview on attendance and just some thoughts around um, individual meetings. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've been on average, I would say um, 30 plus attendees, you know, obviously some are a little bit more than others, um, but, but those for the most part have been kind of what we're trending towards. Um, I think the senior meeting, we have a second one coming up. We are going to be working with the senior center to really try to bulk up attendance at that. And that one is kind of a hybrid platform where we are, are hosting the meeting on Zoom, but we also have the ability to have uh, a live audience, I guess, um, socially distanced at the senior center. So we are really making a, a, a big push to, to advertise that um, to try to increase attendance because that was uh, the community outreach presentation that had the least amount of attendance, but that could be, it was a Monday morning after a holiday weekend. Um, so there's a lot of factors that, that could have gone into that. So we, we want to bolster up that attendance for the upcoming 
uh, senior meeting, which is April 23rd. Yeah, and to complement those, and we and Kat mentioned it before, those that Facebook Live um, streaming that we do, on average, I would see, I was kind of looking back through, um, we're, we're seeing about 100 uh, views or so around there uh, via Facebook Live. Um, so we would not see those in our attendee list, um, but they are certainly views. And I'm always going to say, I would say most likely distinct views. Uh, I don't think too many people are going to rewatch. Maybe they are. Um, but it's a nice, um, it's, a, it's a nice addition, I think, uh, to an access for people um, is that Facebook Live portion. So I, I think we'll continue with that specifically generated from our Facebook page. So again, it's always going back to our content, to our resources uh, for the building committee, which I think is very important. So I think overall, and I, and I think, and, and I can back us up on this, that we're going to see uh, obviously an increase. Uh, in attendance as we get closer um, to referendum or at least till that May time frame when these meetings are going to drop off the calendar. But, you know, people are, are probably going to, you know, attend if they can. We see a lot of repeat attendees as well right now, but I think people will look for, oh, oh my gosh, I only have one or two more options. I, I need to go to some. So I think we'll see an increase as well um, overall, but I think the best thing we can do is keep going out there and having conversations. Um, to have, to Iris' point about the PTO piece, um, we did have a PTO specific meeting, um, which was a joint, which is an opportunity, which was really nice that Scott was able to pull together for us, was a, uh, a joint PTO meeting of all of uh, the elementary schools um, in one location, so in one Zoom uh, location. And um, although I don't know if we ever got the actual attendance on that meeting, do we know? Devin or Kat, like how many people we got that night? I, I mean, I was kind of monitoring the attendee list and it was it was over 50, okay. possibly in the 60s um, at the highest point. So, I, I mean, this is just anecdotal looking back on it, but it, it was definitely over 50. Okay. And so I think we, see, we have an opportunity there of uh, that being our primary uh, demographic. Um, so I think we have to think a little bit creatively too of how do we get back out to that same group as Ira mentioned before. Um, what's the best way for us to do that? What's going to be most effective? What's the timing around that to make sure we get um, those parents engaged? Because uh, we do know that turnout is what's going to be important to the success. So I think it's something, although, you know, adding another meeting to the calendar isn't uh, onto the top of the list, I think that is really a priority that we need to look at. And this, this, the questions, and anybody who was there that night can jump in on this as well, um, were very specific, I thought, um, which would make perfect sense based on our audience. Um, but I think, you know, thinking about that information, there's a lot that we presented, even though it was an abbreviated format, there was a lot there. Um, and maybe giving people another opportunity to come and really think about the information and, and ask, ask questions and really, you know, show some excitement around the project might be, I think, beneficial as well. So I think that would be my suggestion if we were looking at improvements on the overall schedule is that we can kind of look at what's our another point of engagement with those PTOs. Hey, Megan, it's Ellen. I have an idea. And I was yeah. talking to Kathy Greeter about this today because we have another um, uh, superintendent's parent forum coming up. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the questions that, that I thought I listened into that meeting are going to pertain to probably what we're going to be addressing tonight um, at the at the building committee meeting yeah. and sort of direction as far as elections enforcement. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a lot of those questions are very important to them. I don't think we really got to that either, answering some of the things that they're wondering about, what they can do. So we were actually talking about that today. Maybe we could piggyback um, on the next parent forum because those are all the lead. Those are all the um, the school leaders and uh, community leaders. It's a, it's a pretty comprehensive group with distribution, so. Yeah, yeah I, that wouldn't add another meeting. Okay, go ahead, Ira. Yeah, I, I think, you know, a week before the quiet period, we have to, between the attorneys, what can we leave up on the website? You know, what to the outside groups, if they want to use any information, how they have the access to it. Can we still use the video? Other things that come into it are, and it has to be more information based, but you know, it's, it's, it really depends on the interpretation of your town attorneys 
what we can do and leave off. And so the transition to understanding, because this ties to the election laws, is saying, you know, where'd you all go? And no matter how much, you know, we keep in mind, we're probably going to, if anything, like maybe two, 300 people know about what's going on, but the other people don't understand election laws. They don't understand how, you know, no one's going to read that 700, whatever, 250 page document that comes out of the Elections Commission. So I agree, focusing on that and letting people understand, but also the information that's going to be transmitted, what can be transmitted and what cannot be has to be kind of looked at it also, just in a legal sense versus, you know, the advocacy could still happen with individuals, but obviously institutionally, that's the biggest way to address this. And any individual in the town can take on anything they want to do. Uh, just the institutional spending and support has to you know, kind of dry up or not be used. So Ellen, this goes to, you know, uh, understanding what the election all happens in terms of when they don't see the building committee, even though the building committee's there. So what can we leave up for them and stuff? So I think all that has to be addressed. Yeah, and hopefully our conversation tonight is going to be, um, you know, kind of the introduction to that, Ellen, is, you know, we have some documentation, we have some FAQs um, and some things that will help us address some of those questions, but let's get on the table specific examples of things that we really need to get some, some answers to. Um, so hopefully that conversation, you know, we can start that tonight and really make sure that, you know, when we do go to the resources that are going to give us the answers that we're asking the right questions. Um, the other thing, oh, I also want to bring here in, uh, on um, something that came out of the PTO meeting. It was kind of at the very end um, when we were wrapping up on questions and answers and, and Caitlin Eckler, Eckler, who was helping us um, moderate mentioned some questions I think that came out about voting and who can vote um, and I don't know if we I don't think we have anything specific to that on our website or as a resource I just wanted to throw that out there to, to everybody on you know is there something is that how, what's the best way to approach that um, and you know what kind of questions are out there things that people have heard around this didn't we touch that in a newsletter where we said, about, like, if you're not registered, you need to register. Here's how to register. We did. We had a box on there. Um, but I, I don't know. And maybe that's enough. Ira, you can give us some direction on this. But I, I don't know. if I think there might be still questions out there of, you know, can well, I? I think it should be on the three websites right now, the billing committee, the town, and the board of ed. And saying, you know, a referendum is coming up uh, to understand your status, see if you're registered properly, uh, go to the website or call the register of voters. It's just basic information. That's stuff you can do. So it never hurts to repeat this. Yeah. Even though every household got that newsletter and it's on the website, I guarantee you many people, you know, I believe I've heard after some of these referendums, oh, I forgot to register. You know, we, we're assuming, you know, I'm sure all of you are registered, we understand it, but you'd be amazed people who are, you know, across the board, they, they forget to do it. And uh, I don't know if it's a state control, I, I think they did the last the 2020 election where they can almost register a day before. I think those were just temporary laws. So I think the register of voters, I would give them a call and see if those things have modified CAT have you spoken to them at all, the register of voters? Um, I am coordinating a meeting uh, with the town clerk and the register of voters just to make sure we have everything we need to logistically for uh, the referendum. Um, so we can we can definitely discuss this. And then put this up on the web, put it on the website right now, provide a little more maybe information that we have uh, added to the what was on the newsletter. Hey Kat, mm -hmm. I would also check in about absentee ballots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and have clear information about how to obtain one. Um, I know the governor, I believe, and I haven't read through his latest, um, but I think there's more information about absentee ballots and COVID um, and all of that. So I'll make sure we read through it and have clear direction for that. Yeah, there's college students, military, all that stuff. You've got kind to of look at all that. And so if we have to list a little bit more, here's what you need to do if you're not going to be in town that day. 
Ira, would seniors, like folks living in senior centers, fall with, fall into that? When seniors, excuse me? Would folks living in the senior centers fall into that? Or if there's transportation available, then it's, then it, they wouldn't qualify or? No, I mean, it's, it, I mean, they can do absentee or they can show up. Usually the town would arrange, I know here in Glass, but they, they just arrange bring people to the voting Glenn, center. Yeah. yeah, it depends what, you might want to look at the, talk to the senior center about the busing and the transportation on that day. Okay. And, you know, it's, I mean, we can put a little short piece of that in the third newsletter also. We can put a little more detail in this one. If we, you know, if you're this, this, and this is what you do. Put a special section in there. Okay. Any other thoughts or ideas? Anything else anybody wants to discuss? Or any feedback you've received? Ellen, I got great feedback on B from the, the senior meeting. So that was great. We'll be back for the other one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, which is perfect. <laughs> um, I think that's awesome. So we had having kind of special guests, I think is important anytime we can do that and pull people in just so people are hearing voices and representation um, across the town, I think are, are, is, is very beneficial. I, and I also have actually gotten quite a few um, comments on the fact that we have multiple representatives at the meeting voicing yeah. their support. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that is, that's really critical to the message. And, um, I think people really appreciate that, that aspect of being able to hear from, you know, all the different kind of stakeholders in the project and, and making sure that they hear, you know, the support for the, for the project overall. So there's one tomorrow, right? Yes. yes. There's a topic Perfect. meeting. The topic, yeah, topic meeting. meeting. Topic meeting. Yeah. Um, uh, Meg, uh, Kathy, have you ever done uh, voter registration in the high school at all for 18-year-olds? Yeah, we do you it do every it? year. Could, could, based upon the, uh, what the town does, can, you, can that be arranged for who is ever 18 years old, a it's, senior? It's, it's in process right now. We do it every year in the spring. So. Oh, okay. Our, um, our political, we have three different political clubs. They help organize it through our civics program. Scott, when do, when is the, when's the last one? When's the last one you're going to be doing to high school? Um, I'll have to check. It is, it is before the May, uh, before early May. So working with our director of student activities and Lance Goldberg, who is one of our civics teachers, helping organize that for late April. Yeah, Thank you know, depending how many, I mean, it's always good to get as close to the referendum. See if you, if about May, I don't know how many students you got turning 18 in May, but you know, that's their first civic responsibility. See if you can get them in there. The other thing, Ira, is that when, um, and Scott, you're, you're, I'm sure that your students already know this, is that when we're registering, we register um, 17 year olds automatic you, you, if you're 17 and going to be turning 18 by the yeah. referendum date so we might be able yeah. if yeah. It happens and can't happen again good idea i could read if you're going to be 18 before june 3rd register you'll they'll roll you right in no yeah that's that's good to know thanks ellen thank you Okay, any other thoughts, questions, feedback, anybody heard? Anybody heard about meetings? I just think it's great that we've had, um, you know, almost every session's come up with different questions. Yeah. Um, so we've gotten very different um, perspectives, um, which I think has been helpful for us as we've been moving forward. So, yeah, it's been good. Meg, I just went and tallied up. There's close between four and 500 people since the end of March, beginning of April, have gone specifically to get information or tag these meetings we've been running. So that's pretty good. Yeah. In other words, those views I've seen, so I was looking at the areas, because I can see what pages they went to. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a minimum of between 50 and 60, this looks on the website, um, participating or not, but at least they went there to get, or they're looking for the information. Uh, Devin, are these all posted? The, the recordings for each of these? 
They are, yep, on that. We should, we should reiterate that too, that if you missed yep. one, you want to listen to one. Uh, it wouldn't be bad to plug that on the website too. Yep, and I think um, we can advertise it through some social media posts as well. Yeah, yes, good idea. So the videos are all listed here. Yeah, yeah, I see. Um, just sometimes the simple links, maybe that's a good place for social media for posting, absolutely right. And just a quick link right on the home page when hurt. All right, any other thoughts, questions? I mean, there's a lot going on, but we're, I think we just keep going, we keep, um, you know, we've got a lot, what I've seen, which is, which is really great, just as a side note is, you know, the content is there. Um, it's a matter of choosing what to use when based on the audience, which is a great place for us to be, meaning, you know, it's, it's we have options, we have choices. Um, Kat's doing a, a fantastic job giving us scripting so that people feel comfortable. Um, you know, so I think overall, this is really, you know, it's coming together very, very nicely. And, and uh, you know, by the time, you know, as we're, we're I, I think we're really right now to the point where we have a good idea of what formats work for different audiences. Um, and then, you know, we have that, remember that final community meeting, um, which I'm hoping really is um, a great opportunity for us to highlight everything. Um, you know, we, we still haven't talked about that content yet, but, you know, we'll know a lot by then um, and, and questions. And I think the good thing is, is that, you know, a lot of the questions, um, you know, have, have there are things that we've discussed, uh, things that we're, um, have answers for some, we need to do a little research on, and that's always good to know as well. But um, overall, I think it's, it's just really nice to be in the place we're in. I think we're exactly where we should be, so. Any other thoughts? Or are we uh, able to give people a little time, time back, which is nice before the next meeting? Awesome. All right, if nobody has any other updates, then I will uh, ask for a motion to adjourn, please. Alan, motion to adjourn. Ms. Wendy, second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we will adjourn at 6.10 and we will see everybody in a few minutes.